Hello and welcome to August's episode of Scotland Shop on the Sofa. This month we've been exploring all things Burnett and it's been a real treat to find out more about this ancient impressive family. We've had a lot of fun learning about the Burnets but sadly as always we're not the experts as much as we wish we were. Please let us know if there's anything you think we've got wrong or if we've missed anything out. We'd also love to hear from you if you have a link to the Burnett family. Reach out in the comments or drop us a message and let us know what being part of the clan and sharing its heritage means to you. Let's start at the beginning with the origins of this legendary clan. There is some debate around the origin of the name Burnett, but it seems most likely that it came from the variant of Bernard or Bernard, which itself come from the old English name Beonherd, meaning Bearhand or Brave Warrior. The Bernards came to Scotland from England in the 12th century and settled in the south. They were given a large barony of Barringdown or Farrington in Roxburghshire, Scotland under the new system of land holding instigated by King David I. As they became established in the area, they became to be known as the Burnets of Barnes and the family became associated with the lands of Burnet land and Barnes. However, the adventurous Burnets were not only content with staying in just one area, they took the first opportunity they could to expand their territory and explore new lands. One man who particularly displayed this daring spirit was Alexander Burnett, who left his home in Roxburghshire and travelled around Scotland to support Robert the Bruce in the battle for Scottish independence. Robert was so grateful for Alexander's loyal support that he generously rewarded him with the land on the banks of the River Dee in the parish of Bankery Ternan, just west of Aberdeen. He also granted him the prestigious title of Forester of the Royal Forest of Drum. As his badge of office, Alexander received the Horn of Lays, a beautiful carved ivory horn decorated with metal badges and precious stones. To this day, the horn belongs to the Burnets and can be seen at the clan seat in Crathis Castle. The history behind Crathis Castle is one of the most interesting parts of our research this month. In 1553, the Burnets began to work on the land they had been gifted by by Robert the Bruce starting to build what would eventually become their magnificent castle. Construction was delayed several times due to the political instability of Mary Queen of Scots reign, but was eventually completed in 1596. To this day there are four storeys and an attic. The upper storeys are strikingly ornate and adorned with corbelling, bartizans, stair turrets and decoration, while the lower storeys are comparatively plain, apart from the large modern window on the first floor. There is also an 18th century wing that was burned down in 1966 and was replaced by a two-storey range. It is not just the building itself that is worth exploring. There is also an intricate maze of walled gardens with its own impressive history. The iconic yew hedges were planted as early as 1702. You should also take care to look out for wildlife as you might be lucky enough to spot deer, red squirrels, woodpeckers, buzzards and herons. Arguably, even more intriguingly, there's an also a chance that you might run into a ghost or two. What castle is complete without a few haunting tales? It is widely believed that there is a mysterious ghostly presence who walks the halls of Crathis Castle, now known as the Green Lady. Nobody is sure who exactly this young woman was, but one popular story alleges that she was one of the Burnett Laird's daughters. It is thought that the girl had an illicit relationship with a stable boy and became pregnant. She hid her condition for as long as possible but was unable to conceal what had happened any longer after she gave birth. Supposedly her father flew into a rage and soon after the girl and the baby both disappeared. While it may sound fanciful, it seems that this tale could have some basis in truth. As during renovations in the castle in the 1800s, workmen discovered the bones of a young baby beneath the hearth of the fireplace. Not only have many visitors claimed to have seen the ghost of the Green Lady and her baby, but in 2011, instruments during one sighting recorded temperatures plunging between 10pm and midnight in her room and then coming back up, while in the surrounding rooms it didn't change. Legend also has it that Crathis Castle is haunted by the vengeful ghost of Bertha D. Bernard, the story goes that Bertha visited the castle and fell in love at first sight with one of her cousins. Questionable. Yep. <laughs> Tragically, however, the young man was already betrothed to a daughter of the Duke of Hamilton, chief of Clan Hamilton. His mother, Lady Agnes Burnett, would not allow a marriage into such a powerful Scottish family to be jeopardised, so she sent her son away to England. 
Bertha died in suspicious circumstances very soon after, prompting rumours that Lady Agnes had poisoned her. When Bertha's father returned and heard of his daughter's death, he cursed the family and since then a white lady has haunted Carthus, seeking revenge or perhaps searching for her long lost love. If that's all a bit too spooky for you, we think you'll find the history of the beautiful Lock of Lays a perfect palate cleanser. Although it has now been drained to the north of the village of Bankery, you, you could once find the Lock of Lays. In the centre of the lock was a crannog, or artificial island, which had been a place of refuge for centuries. It is even thought to be the burial place of St Ternan, or the Archbishop of the Picts, who was one of the first Christian missionaries in the northeast. St Ternan died after 500 AD, so, if true, this accolade really illustrates the site's long-standing status for a sacred and hallowed place. For the first 200 years of the Burnett's residence in the area, starting in the early 1300s, this crannog was the site of the family's main stronghold. The Burnett's clearly felt a great connection with the land and had no qualms about defending it, even in the most unusual circumstances. During a territory dispute between the Burnett's and the nearby laird, the Burnett's asked their local priest, Father Ambrose, to assist in negotiations. However, Ambrose refused, incensing the Burnett family. In retaliation, they denied the monks' fishing rights in the Lock of Lays, prompting the monks to curse the family. A lot of cursing. There's a lot of cursing in the Burnett <laughs> clan. This caused even more bad blood between the two parties, and the Burnett's attempted to drain the lock to ensure that their adversaries could not benefit from the use of their land in any way. However, a truce was reached and the two sides reconciled before this mammoth task could be completed. The Burnett family maintained their fighting spirit, however, and a strong tradition of military service in the First World War. A direct descendant of Alexander, Major General Sir James Lauderdale Gilbert Burnett, 13th Baronet, was a renowned British Army officer. He was commissioned into the Gordon Highlanders in 1899. He went on to be commander of the 14th Infantry Brigade in 1927, the 153rd Infantry Brigade in 1928 and the 8th Infantry Brigade in 1930. The last appointment of his long-running and impressive career was as General Officer commanding the 51st Highland Division in June 1931. He eventually retired in June 1935, having achieved numerous awards, including Companion of the Order of the Bath, St Michael's and St George, and the Distinguished Service Order. Even after his retirement, Major James played an important role in the upholding and promoting the Burnett family name when he gifted Crathis Castle, their ancestral seat, to the National Trust in 1952. In doing so, he helped to ensure that the Burnett's illustrious history lives on in the public imagination. Other famous Burnett's have upheld the family name in a very different arena. Carol Burnett was an American actress, comedian, singer and writer who achieved great success in, her, in the entertainment field. She was born on the 26th of April 1933 in San Antonio, Texas, but moved to California with her family in the late 1930s, where she lived in the Hollywood area. Her theatrical talents and impressive imagination were clear from a very young age. As a child, she would pretend to have a twin sister named Karen. Carol fondly recalled in an interview how she fooled the other boarders in the rooming house where they lived by frantically switching clothes and dashing in and out of the house by the fire escape and their front door. It's a bit an odd, an odd one. <coughs> What's the film? <laughs> What's that film? The parent <laughs> She attended Hollywood High School and graduated in 1951, going on to study theatre and musicals comedy at UCLA. Even this seemed like an act of fate as after she graduated high school, she received an anonymous envelope containing $50, the money she needed for her first year of tu college tuition. After she made it to college, Carol's career was once again helped by a ran random act of kindness. During her junior year in 1954, Burnett staged a performance as part of one of her classes. Afterwards, a man and his wife approached her, deeply impressed by her talent. They complimented her and asked about her future plans. When they learned that she wanted to travel to New York to try to build a career in entertainment but could not afford the trip, they offered her a $1,000 interest-free loan. The only conditions were that the loan should be repaid within five years, their names were never to be revealed, and if she achieved success, she would help others to pursue their artistic dreams. 
Burnett couldn't believe her luck and gladly accepted this offer, leaving college and moving to New York to pursue stardom. After moving to the city, she performed in nightclubs before gaining breakout success on Broadway in 1959 in Once Upon a Mattress, for which she received a Tony Award nomination. Soon after, she made her television debut, regularly appearing on The Gary Moore Show for the next three years, winning her first Emmy Award in 1962. Burnett then moved to Los Angeles and began an 11 year run as the eponymous star of The Carol Burnett Show on CBS television from 1967 to 1978. The Carol Burnett Show was a variety show that combined comedy sketches with musical numbers. The sketches included film parodies and characters' pieces which were perhaps aided by Burnett's early experiences performing as her imaginary twin, Carol. Burnett created many memorable and beloved characters during the show's run, and both she and the show won numerous Emmy and Golden Globe awards. Burnett also wrote and narrated several memoirs, gaining Grammy nominations for almost all of them, and achieving a win for In Such Good Company. By 2019, Carol had built such a respected name for herself that the Golden Globes named her award after her, a career achievement in television. He has since been awarded to similar big stars, Ryan Murphy and Ellen DeGeneres. It's truly impressive to see how the Burnett name has made it all the way to Hollywood. Our final notable Burnett has combined both the family's tradition of military service and their clear theatrical skill. Mark Burnett is a TV producer famous for creating and producing a number of extremely popular reality shows such as Survivor, The Apprentice and The Voice. Burnett was born on the 17th of July 1960 in London and was raised in Dagenham, Essex. At the age of 17, he followed a long-standing Burnett custom and enlist enlisted in the British Army. He quickly became a section commander in the Parachute Regiment. From 1978 to 1982, he served with the 3rd Battalion Parachute Regiment in C Company and saw action during the Falklands War and in Northern Ireland. After his service, he initially planned to go to Central America and work as a weapons and tactics advisor, but found himself instead taking an unlikely career change. In 1991, Burnett and four others took part in a French adventure competition called Raid Galluses. This experience sparked an idea for Burnett. He imagined holding similar competitions could be a lucrative business. Inspired, he purchased the format rights and brought a similar competition, Eco Challenge, to America. This launched Burnett's career as a television producer and eventually led to the hit reality show Survivor, which premiered in the summer of 2000 and named the number one reality series of all time by Entertainment Weekly in 2009. As of 2022, Burnett is executive producer of five TV shows, Generation Gap, Beach Shazam, Shark Tank, Survivor and The Voice. He has produced more than 3,200 hours of television programming which is regularly airs in more than 70 countries. He has been awarded for this impressive work many times over. In 2004, Time magazine called Burnett one of the most influential people in the world today. He has also won the prestigious Rose, Rosedorf Rafa Format Award, the Brandon Tartikoff Legacy Award and the Norman Lear Award from the Producers Guild of America. Burnett served for two years on the board of directors for the BAFTAs and was elected into the Broadcast and Cable Hall of Fame in November 2007. In 2009, he was even honoured with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. As we're sure you can tell, we could talk about Burnett's all day, but sadly we're running out of time in this episode. Before we go though, we need to tell you about our favourite thing here at Scotland Shop, Tartan. The Burnett Tartan is mainly red and green, intercut with orange and blue lines, we stock the modern, ancient and weathered variety, so there's something to suit everyone. The modern is perfect if you like bold, vibrant look, whereas the ancient and weathered feature beautiful faded tones, evocative of much loved and worn peace. We hope you've enjoyed this whistle stop tour through the history of the Burnett family. There's so much more we could have shared, but it's impossible to fit it all in. If you'd like to find out even more about the Burnets, please do pay a visit to the newly updated clan page on our website, as well as our blog post. You can also test your knowledge on all things Burnets with our quiz. To stay updated on all our clan content, don't forget to, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, email newsletter and social media.